What's up, everyone? It's me, The Installer. I'm here with the 2024 lineup from Samsung. It's been a minute. I'm excited to kind of give you this all at once. So we're gonna start out with the 4K, 8K, get to the QD OLED that I know everyone is questioning and wondering about, which I'm excited for. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you a couple of deals from the 2023 models that I think you could still get. So it's gonna be an exciting video. Let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the QN90D. Now we've had four generations of this. Yes, we've had the 90A, B, C, and now this is the D. And while I thought it was going great for the first couple of years, I did think that the QN90C was a little bit of a step back for a couple of reasons. They were working on new backlighting and it seemed like it was more like the QN85 series than I was used to, as opposed to the highest Samsung quality. I've said that in my reviews last year. However, it was a pretty good TV overall, the QN90C. But this QN90D did look a little bit better. It does look like it has better processing. It is a new processor. So you're gonna have the fact that it continues to be a great QLED, a great mini LED QLED, and you're gonna have some great features that carry over. You're gonna have 144 Hertz gaming with VRR, which is something that I know gamers are big fans of. And then again, with the new processor, you're gonna have better upscaling, better motion. These are in theory what you're gonna see. Now it did look fantastic, I have to admit. Uh, we got sort of a shorter hands-on look at this. It wasn't in the house for review, so when it is, I'll be excited for that and I have something I'm really excited for hold on one second but processors are one of those things where you really need to see it in action you know in your own house before you can really say it's working much better but to have this new uh, NQ4 AI Gen 2 processor should be a big step up. You know, everything's getting smarter and better. So I'm a big fan of the improvements we see year over year. Now, the thing that I'm really excited about with the QN90D is that they have so many sizes. They have a 43 inch all the way up to a 98 inch. And you know me, we wanna get the 98 inch because if we can get a Neo QLED 98 inch, I know it says it's pretty expensive here, of course, I'm not gonna lie about that. If we can get that price down and this thing is the best 98 inch TV that we've ever seen, that would be really exciting for those who want a big TV because again, this rivals the ultra short throw projectors. They're a little bigger. This is much brighter. I'm assuming that this is gonna be fantastic. So if this is anywhere as good as the QN 90A we had at 98 inch, it'll be fantastic. So super excited about that. Got the 43 if you wanna get a smaller gaming monitor and then you got the typical sizes. The 65 inch starting at $2,700 is fairly typical for a TV of this quality at this size. Um, obviously people will probably wait a little bit later to buy this if they can, but the good thing is about these TVs now, if you actually look at any of these TVs that I'm talking about today, you can pre-order them on the website from the links in the description below, and you actually get a 65 inch class crystal UHD TV, the TU690T on us. So that TV is actually quite good for your typical like guest room, mom or dad TV, someone that is not an, a video file, but wants a decent TV in their house or in their room or something. And they just want to watch sports or news or something. You don't want to have one of the logos of CNN or whatever burning in the corner. Just grab one of these uh, new lineups and you can actually get a free TV. That's pretty cool. I think that's awesome. And then another thing that we got to do with the QN90D was connect the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro to them. These are my favorite headphones that I currently have as far as the in-ear ones very light and very like great at noise canceling and the reason I bring this up is because it is pretty cool to pair this I have a Samsung phone I have a Samsung watch to get a TV from Samsung and then be able to you know seamlessly go from your watch to your phone to your TV with these headphones if you're watching them alone is pretty awesome and so a little bit of a plug here it's you know just something I wanted to do but I have a couple pair of these they are fantastic Eric and I were testing them out with KG tech with KG and when they when those guys had them on and connected they literally couldn't hear what I was saying because they're they're so good and they're not very expensive either. So I would consider checking these out while you're at it. And if you're looking to get a QN90C still because the QN90D is expensive, you can actually get the 85 inch QN90C for the same price as that new 65 inch QN90D or a little less actually, $100 less. That's crazy. So I would consider that, um, you know, again, I think there are improvements year over year and I think it's gonna be a good year for Samsung, but you know, this is 20 inches larger. So if you're looking for the big game TV or something, you could get this and then if you go to 65 inch, it's only uh, $15.99. So you're saving $1,000 right now on last year's model. So something to consider, but we need to move on. Now, next is the 8K Samsung, the QN900D. Now, most people probably aren't super excited for an 8K unless that's something you're gonna consider. And why would you consider that? Because typically they give the best components to the 8K because it upscales the best, it's the brightest, all these things. So I think that still is considered here. I think it is still going to be probably the best performing Neo QLED TV 
So really awesome. It's got a new processor. And I think I heard at CES that the processor is supposed to be eight times as fast as their last year's 8K processors. And this is called the NQ8 AI Gen 3 processor. And so why would that be important? Again, it always comes down to upscaling, motion, things like that, the ability to work properly, the dimming zones of the TV. So if you have a ton of mini LED dimming zones, you want a fast processor in order to make those glow and dim or shut off you know, as fast as appropriately for that TV. And one of the things that Samsung showed us with regards to this processor is the AI and how it can track a ball. So we were watching some soccer and they were able to show us what typically happens with you know processing and motion. And when you're watching something that's in a different frame rate than maybe it was intended to be, you can't see the ball. Sometimes a white ball will disappear and then come back and you may not notice it, but a lot of people do. And with this AI Motion Enhancer Pro, the actual processor will identify a ball on the screen and it will be able to keep it on the screen as it goes across. So something that we got to see and it was pretty awesome. And I think that will help with regards to watching sports where a lot of these TVs are made for that. But this 8K was actually in a dark room and we were all looking at it, all the different TV reviewers, and I don't think anyone really complained at how good it looked in a darker room. Typically, you know, dark rooms you consider for OLED TVs, but this looked fantastic, really bright, really sharp. I mean, the, the content was fantastic. Again, it comes down to whether or not you're gonna watch something with 8K, but the 8K TV has the ability to upscale it to 8K, even from 1080 or 720, and it looks really nice. I mean, it's a fantastic looking TV. And it does have 240 hertz for gaming, which is incredible. So if you're a gamer and you're trying to play one of those games that's only typically for a PC, you can you know try it on this TV, see how good it is. Again, we're going to have this in the house if possible, so I'll be able to give more of an in-depth review if that's the case. But looking at the price here, uh, it's rather expensive, of course. They normally start very expensive, but an 85-inch 8K QN900D is listed at 8,000 bucks, 65, 5,000. You know, so. These prices, I think it's exactly what it was last year. And you know, they come down over time, but people that get these typically are really happy with them. And I think it's good that they still have a really good high-end 8K TV, even though it might not be on everybody's shopping list. Now, another TV that I cover that not everyone's excited about, but it's a really good combination of TV and art is a Samsung frame. We've been looking at this TV for multiple years. It's one of my first videos I made on YouTube to get to a million views was pretty awesome. So I've been a fan because I installed them all the time before I had done YouTube. And it's like a perfect combination for people that, you know, you want to have a TV that's good for sports, good for gaming, but yet your wife doesn't even want a TV. So then you have to settle a little bit. I mean, that happens, man. It happens to a lot of people. So I'm glad they made it because for art, you really can't compete with this at low light, make it look just like an actual picture this does a great job i know the next holiday for most of us is mother's day so if your wife wants a tv or your mom consider the samsung frame it's just a no-brainer and it's actually a pretty good solid tv it's fairly bright i would consider it similar to something like the sony x 90l it's maybe not quite as bright but it's still pretty solid and the price point is similar and in this instance you get all this art mode i had a client that was considering getting the sony or getting this i have other people that get this just because they like the art so Great opportunity. And it's cool that they're kind of moving the ball forward with this. Now this year, you'll be able to get the most recent version of a great series of TVs, uh, QLED, 4K, but also be able to get some of these music frames to put on the sides of the TV. So if you want your rear speakers, or if you just want Bluetooth speakers where you could play music, you'll be able to connect these music frames in with your system. And it's pretty neat. They sound pretty good for little guys. You know, it probably doesn't replace what I would think is like a big sound system, but for me, having the TV and a couple of these uh, picture frame speakers on the side is not going to necessarily replace a big sound system. So I actually like to consider the ultra slim sound bar for the Samsung frame because sometimes the bigger sound bars look a little bit bulky when you have, you know, a picture frame on the wall. So if you look here, this big sound bar, if that was a frame TV, might just not match perfectly. So I think if you got something like this more ultra slim sound bar, and if you can get it in white, you know, it looks really good on the wall. And you can pair this sound bar with those side speakers. So I'm not exactly sure how many speakers can connect and do the Q Symphony and all that. It was a little bit unclear. Uh, I hope to clarify that as time goes on, but I would get, you know, consider at least that ultra slim speaker setup, or you can look at the new Q series. They have the 11.1.4, the Q990D. So this setup, 
in the Q990C was already fantastic. Again, they have a new version of this out, you know, works with these TVs. So if you're a Samsung person, you're gonna go Samsung and Samsung, you'll be able to utilize all the speakers on the TV to help with this soundbar. I do recommend that. I think it really works nicely. Then you also have some on-screen setup. You have some on-screen menus. So if you stick with a soundbar, like a Samsung and a Samsung, I think it's a great idea. And you're not really lacking anything. This fantastic, powerful system. So I'm probably most excited besides the next TV I'm gonna talk about in a second to get this soundbar system. So I think this will be fantastic. Hopefully I can get them together. That'd be even better. So you have an 11.1.4 where you have the rears that also have up firing speakers. I mean, look, look at all the speakers on this thing. It's gonna be fantastic. And typically the bass from this is pretty solid too. So as I said, I'm very excited to test this out. Now, before I get to my recommendations on what you can buy right now, I wanna talk about the OLED S95D. Now, this looks like a fantastic upgrade. It looks awesome to me. I'm a big fan of the QD OLED TVs. I think this is gonna be you know, third generation. It's gonna keep getting better and better. And again, you have the ability to have 144 Hertz panel with VRR. It's gonna be awesome. New processor, again, this is the NQ4 AI Gen 2 processor. So it's not the same one that's in the AK TV, but still looking to improve upon upscaling motion and all these things that are important. Again, you're gonna get the Tizen operating system with a few more features this year. You'll get the solar cell remote, you get the Samsung Plus TVs, all these things. But the one thing that I think everybody's waiting for me to talk about is the new matte finish on this TV. So people don't like glare, but they really like the glossy finish of an OLED TV. So this is clearly gonna be something that's talked about in 2024. In a room with lighting that's dimly lit, but still has lights in there, or if you have a window to your side, but it's kind of back off far in the corner, when the screen gets dark, in my opinion, OLEDs kind of suffer because you can really see those reflections. Now, Samsung did something about it. They took their best TV in 2024 and gave it a matte finish. I think it's a fantastic move. It doesn't bother me at all when you're watching something in the daytime and it has that matte finish when you look off angle because the screen looks the same to me. It looks like it has all of the upside with none of the downside. The only time that it does come into play on a negative side is if it's just a ton of light coming in, it can make that entire matte area look like it's washed out. But if you're looking at like your averagely lit room, you see no reflections in it. It's fantastic. And the TV is extremely bright and powerful. And when you're in a dark room, again, there's no downside. It looks exactly the same. And I would bet that if you're in a pitch dark room, no one could tell the difference. So that's a plus. And in a bright room, if you had to be right in front of the two TVs like we were at CES and again at Samsung, you would probably prefer the matte finish. Now, I'm not gonna sell you on it. It's something that you guys are gonna have to decide on your own. But I got a lot of yuck comments and barf and that's the reason I'm not gonna buy a Samsung TV, which I think is crazy until you see it for yourself because the glossiness of an OLED I understand it does look pretty cool when you're watching or when a TV's off, but if you really think about it, you just want the TV to look perfect and you don't want reflections and reflections do not help when you're watching a sporting event or a movie if you see light in the background. So I think it's a fantastic idea and I think the power of a flagship QD OLED TV overcomes any kind of little downsides and I don't think that this is actually an issue. So I'm super excited to see this TV. However, we need to talk about what TVs you can currently get because Right now, that TV is rather expensive to pre-order, right? So let's look at the price point. We're talking about the S95D being $4,600 right now for 77 inch, a 65, 33, 99, 55, 2600. So you can get the QN90D 65 inch for the same price as this 55 inch. So again, early on, these are pre-orders, but if you wanna consider something and maybe you just say, I'm not gonna buy that one with the matte finish, then you can just go in and look at the last year's TV, the S95C, and see that right now, the 77 inch S95C is actually $1,000 less than the new S95D. So if you weren't gonna go for that matte finish anyways, then you're just better off going ahead and getting last year's S95C because it's just so much less expensive and it's fantastic. I don't think there was a lot of complaints with regards to this TV from last year. So again, incremental improvements on these TVs year over year, but this is still a great option. And there's even better options yet. So let's continue with the 2023 models that I would still recommend. And the S90C is still a great opportunity. Uh, this is uh, 77 inch for like half the price of the new one that's coming out. This is really fantastic. Uh, a lot of people really like this TV, but the reason that people aren't recommending this one as much is because Best Buy has their own exclusive, which is this 77 S89C QD OLED, which is only 2000 bucks right now. So it's even $300 less than the S90C. And this one, 
It really has no difference besides this little stand here. The stand doesn't have the little plate that goes over the top. People have confirmed it's a QD OLED. We've been talking about this for a while now. I think it's probably the best opportunity on the internet to buy a high-end TV for a reasonable price. I mean, it's still 77 is $2,000, but you can't get this in any other size or on any other website. This is just a Best Buy exclusive, 2,000 bucks for a 77 inch. I've seen it as low as $1,800. You might be able to haggle with them on the price point, but if you consider that or you know pre-ordering this S95D, for example, you're talking about over twice as expensive. Now, on this, you still get that you know free TV, which is pretty awesome. So if you're just looking and saying, hey, I'm buying one of these 2024 TVs, Maybe you're gonna wait for one of our reviews, totally cool. 4K Neo QLED, the QN90D, all the way up to 98 inch, exciting. Uh, the Samsung 8K, definitely exciting. I still think it's a great opportunity for a lot of people that wanna have the best of the best. I do think that the cool design of this TV is fantastic as well as having that one connect box and just you know being a performer here. So again, I think this will be still probably the premier 8K TV this year, but I don't know if it's something for me. I'm pretty good with an, a 4K TV and then I gravitate towards the QD OLEDs here. Uh, I'm excited for the matte finish of the S95D. It's definitely gonna be a talking point and I think people are gonna either love or hate it and I'll be excited to hear your guys' comments down below. And then the frame, the music frame, the new sound bars, pretty exciting time. So uh, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions about these or something you think you should buy from Samsung that I didn't mention here. Smash the like button, subscribe and all that. And all the links are in the description below for you guys to buy the pre-orders to get the free TV, all that. So check it out in the description below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.